Hello. Hello. Can people hey can people hear us? No. Derek, you got us up on the mic? Cool. Hi, Derek. Hi, Derek. How are you? Everybody give a round Good of applause for Derek in the back. Oh Hi. yeah. Ally, human, sound man. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, I hear if you have a green sticker, Team Green, on your name tag, you're in the right place. Yes, yes. Uh, come on closer if you'd like. If that scares you, stay back. Whatever works for you. <laughs> so I know people are still getting settled. Um, crunch of snacks. Oh, those Google snacks. It's all good. So thanks for being here. So yes, this is our Communicate with Confidence workshop. For the next two hours, we'll be spending this time together. So we are speechless, one portion of speechless. And we are based in San Francisco. We are a small company of five full-time people now. We've been around for just about five years. And we actually started as a show, a comedy show where we have individuals and performers and comedians get up on stage and improvise PowerPoint talks in front of decks they've never seen before. <laughs> Most people's nightmare and many people's joy, uh, especially if you're in the audience not actually doing it. So we started as this show, and our origin story came from there. We then had our Speechless Live show that we still have happening globally around the world and monthly in San Francisco. We're just about to celebrate our fifth anniversary show. Thank you, thank you. And from that came Speechless Learn, a whole training uh, wing where we offer both personal, individual coaching, group and company-wide culture-changing training that helps performing and presenting be the same thing. We have very much background in entertainment as actors and improvisers and teachers and coaches. And our job that we love to do is to help public speaking and presentations be more joyful, more authentic, less scary. We all have to do this thing, so let's enjoy it and let it be an opportunity to express and to connect. So that's what we get to do for a living. And we got flown out from San Francisco here to be with you fine people. So we're very excited to be here. <laughs> Thanks. So. They're clapping already, Sammy. Good night, everybody. OK, so long. <laughs> We're doing something right. So uh, my name is Claire Slattery. I am the director of performance at Speechless. I've been with the company since the very beginning, uh, employee number one. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, my gosh, so much love in this room. Uh, I'm also a professional actor and improviser, producer, and comedian. I just moved back from LA to San Francisco, where I performed um, with folks like UCB, Groundlings, Improv Olympic, and now I'm back in San Francisco working full-time for Speechless. I uh, graduated from a small school on the West Coast called Stanford University, <laughs> and where I learned uh, to love improv, and I'm here and I've been doing it professionally for about 10 years as a trainer, facilitator, and a performer. Claire Slattery, everybody. Thank you, thank you. A round of applause. Yay. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me here. My name is Sammy Weijen. I am one of the co-founders and the CEO of Speechless. I've been professionally doing improvisation as a teacher and performer, doing stand-up comedy, on camera and on stage acting for 20 years. I have performed all over the world. Uh, and this is my second summit here in New York. So thank you for having me back. I appreciate hey. it. Well done. So to start us off, we want to immediately tap into this sense of playfulness and how play can bring us together. So we have a quote that we really try to live by at Speechless, which is, you can learn more from a person in an hour of play than a year of conversation. So, oh, I like this. Oh. <laughs> it's resonating. This is good. Great. So what we're going to do, if you're able, we're going to have you stand up. If that doesn't feel great for you, you can remain sitting. But we're going to have you very quickly get into groups of three. You can cluster all around the room. You don't have to stay in this chair area. So get in quickly groups of three. If you're in a group of two, 
Raise your hand if you need an extra person. You need an extra person? Sammy, you want to go with them? Sure. Great. Wonderful. Okay, if you can hear my voice, if you can hear my voice, just close that lovely mouth just for a second. If you can hear me, just let's quiet down for just a second. There's so many of you. It's amazing. All right, so this next moment. So we are now in groups of three, beautiful island nations. Congratulations, you now are all on an island nation <laughs> represented at the United Nations. Now, so you have an island nation, wonderful. Each group of three is this island. Now, all in between these islands is a wonderful blue ocean. Now, there are two gestures you need to know in this exercise called come here, come here. The first one is, I'm out of here. So everybody gets to try that. So on three, one, two, three, I'm out of here. Great, I felt some of that. I felt some of that. But now I want you to envision that friction moment at work or that meeting that feels useless every month, right? And just imagine, you can just get up and say, I'm out of here. Let's do one more two, one more time. One, two, three. I'm out of here. Oh, OK, OK. We've all been in that meeting. Great, good. So that's the first, right? So we're going to ask a question to the entire audience. And this question is going to have one person who is the most answer. So let me, let me make, uh, give an example. So amongst your, your group, you would quickly discuss who had the most caffeine today. So you would quickly discuss, right? Some person would say, this is my 10th <laughs> cup of coffee. <laughs> You'd say, great, without judgment, you win, right? <laughs> That's you, right? You get to go off the island. So if it applies most to you, right, and it's not winning to leave the island, someone must leave the island for the game to work, right? So one person will leave, they'll go, I'm out of here, and they will swim into the ocean blue. <laughs> now, every island is now missing one person. Right? So you, who have been left behind on the island, you've got a job too. So on the island, you need that third person to complete your island, right? Can be the same person that comes back, could be a new island member, but you need three to stay stable and represented at the United Nations, okay? So if you're left behind, you are going to make direct eye contact with some swimmers and you're gonna go this. Come here, 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 come here. Okay, so let's practice that. One, two, three. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Okay, I felt that a lot more. That was, I felt that, great. So yes, imagine that adorable puppy, that beautiful child, that incredible bonus that you deserve and have earned and is almost there. Yeah, you come here, come here that, okay? So those are the two pieces, right? So let's get going. Now, the first question I would love to know, who traveled the furthest to get here to this place today? Quickly discuss. Came from San Francisco. <laughs> is it me? Okay. I'm out of here. Hello, <laughs> I'm Sammy. Lauren? No, Sammy. <laughs> What's that? In what way? Oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> you two based here? Yeah, awesome. It eventually was fantastic, but because of the weather, there was a lot of delays. So like a lot of delaying, and then when I got on the plane, everything was fine. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I got in at like 1 a.m., and then went to the hotel, went to bed, got up, came here. Yeah. The nor I'm learning about the Nor'easter. Oh, over there, over there, great. Yeah. All right, lovely. If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. That's a bomb cyclone. I love it. Okay, lovely, lovely. Does is it every island now complete again somehow? Great. We had one. We had one swimmer who was like, where, where, where? <laughs> and she found him. It was great. We found everyone has an island again. There was panic, but we all we found it together. Wonderful. Great. So now we've done one round. Awesome. This time let's go a little faster, right? So. And maybe there's a time, maybe you both have the equal number amounts of coffee, just one person has to leave the island, right? You make that choice, right? So let's have um, the next one be, let's see, what's another question? Oh, who has gone to the most tech events in their career so far? The most tech events. Really? Is that true? How many? Two? 
I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Okay, I'm out of here. I see, I see what's happening here. Goodbye. Nice to meet you. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. I'm Sammy. Nice to see you. Winnie, Sammy. Nice to meet you. How's your day so far? Yeah? You enjoying the summit? Have you been to one before? Okay. Not this one? I tried to meet him. I couldn't wait for you. I got to do this next year. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. I imagine you're based in this region, this area at least. Yeah. Really cool. San Francisco. Not that far, but I guess farther than, than people that live here. <laughs> All right, if you can hear my voice and clap once. Enough to be a part of. If you can hear uh, my voice clap events, twice. I think we'll talk about that in a If bit. you can I hear my voice clap three times. Too. Awesome. Lovely. I, I love seeing the sea of different facial expressions. Some people are like. <laughs> Some people are like. This much. <laughs> So I love it, I love it. Either way, you got to an island. So both tactics work, You're lovely. You're drowning, no! What do we got? Who's, wait, where's an incomplete island? You, you also have an incomplete island? You need one? Did you just come back from lunch? That's okay. No worries, you are now an island nation of two. It's okay, you get the exception. You get the exception. We're okay. Ah, oh, good thing we're problem solvers. That works out well, okay, lovely. So we're gonna do one final round, and now I'm gonna put it to you. What is this last question that you would like to ask? Maybe, maybe something came up in lunch. Maybe a burning question, maybe. Anything at all. Great, great. So for this round, we're gonna ask who is the most non-techie. But before we do that, so that's the question. Whatever that means to you. That was great, thank you. <laughs> now, when you arrive at your final island, I want you to celebrate in some way. Whatever that means to you. So just celebrate that once again, you can be at that United Nations table. That's where I want to be, obviously, by saying it all the time. Now, just one more celebration as you come together. So again, I'm out of here if you're the, the least techie in your group. And come here, come here, that last person. Go! Uh, I'm going to assume it's me. I'm not technical. And I do what we're doing in the room right now. Okay. So is it me? That's very technical. Okay, I know when I'm not going to. I'm out of here. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I am. I'm Sammy. Oh, oh, oh. Nice to meet you. Not on me. What's your name? Allison. Allison. What's your name? You might be there. Do you mind? Do you mind? Sammy. I think you're nice the two. You. How's your day going so far? It's going all right. Yeah? Yeah. How's your day going? Uh, pretty well. <laughs> I'm on little sleep, but I'm good. I think that's a theme. Yeah, yeah, because of the, the flight uh, delays, I guess. I wish we had like a bottle of champagne pop to totally celebrate. Okay, maybe you're too. Maybe you're too. I'm imagining it. It's, it's if you can hear my voice, clap once. If you can hear my voice, clap twice. If you can hear my voice, clap three times. Amazing. Thank your island. Thank them. Thank you Thanks very for much. Being nice an to island. meet you. I think I'm going to make my way out this way. Yes. Okay, and go ahead and take a seat <laughs> where you are. It's okay. Awesome. Hello. I think we're doing good. Yeah. I don't know what I did there. Mm. Anyway, that's <laughs> Do you want it? All right. Well, that was fun. Thank ah. you for letting me participate as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was kicked off all three of my <laughs> islands, and I have absolutely Man. no idea what that says about me. No. Nope. Um, 
you're but just thank you're you. just you're just the most of everything, Sam. I'm the most you really wanted are. on my island. You really are. Uh, wonderful. So before we jump into more of the the exercises we're going to do today, let's talk a little bit about uh, our relationship, our amazing relationship with women tech makers. Women tech makers and Speechless started around the same time, and we've been able to have the pleasure and the honor of working with women tech makers pretty much that entire time. Uh, so last year we were at ten of these awesome summits uh, in the United States and all over the world, and we saw 974 total participants in our workshops just like this. That was an incredible number for us, and we were really honored with that. Uh, but what astounded us and made us feel the best was that 98% recommended what we did to other people that they met at these summits. So I, <laughs> I know that we've set a pretty high bar for ourselves, but we yeah. hope that you enjoy what we do again today. <laughs> That's why we're back is really the reason that we're showing that. So thank you so much to Women Tech Makers for having us back, and we hope that you enjoy this as well. Uh, and like I said, we've been a part of uh, a lot of different Women Tech Maker events over the past five years, so we really love this relationship. So thank you. So today's focus and what we're doing today in our two hours time is this. We have threefold goals. One is to, to build confidence, to amplify your unique voice, and to take some creative risks today. Yeah. And we're going to do that, as we've already started, with some experiential interactive learning, activating the entire body, senses, not just the neck up, in how we learn how to create and how we engage with each other. And we really want today to be an opportunity to take these you know, skills and short exercises away so that these are tools and techniques you can immediately start using in your work and life. So that's what today is about. And the way that we're going to do that is through this concept that we use called improv thinking. So when you think about improv, you have improvisational theater. We take concepts from improvisational theater and apply it to daily life in the workplace. And that's what we call improv thinking. And so those are some of the tenets that we're going to focus on today. Uh, being spontaneous and so not trying to think ahead. Uh, demonstrating generosity means really look out for each other. You're going to be in pairs and little groups of three or four, just like you already are. Make each other look good. That's a big part of improv thinking is just supporting each other. Embracing authenticity, I think, really means just be yourself, even though we're going to do some exercises that might, in a safe way, push us outside of our comfort zones, even us as well. Uh, there's no consequences to doing them wrong or not having done them before. You don't have to be anything more than what you already are. Just be yourself. And then follow the joy. Have fun. We're already laughing. We're being playful. A big part about being a confident communicator is really enjoying the process of it. Sometimes public speaking is very difficult and uh, you know there's a lot of anxiety around it. But if you can find a way to make it more fun, it releases that. And the last thing is to just take care of yourself. So if you need a bio break, you know where the exits are and you know where the, the restrooms are. So, <laughs> And uh, we're going to be cruising at about 35,000. That's good with me. Um, <laughs> What, what basically is happening during this two hours is, is your call. So you don't have to stay in here the whole time. If you need to take a break, that's up to you because we will not be taking one. So thank you very much. Improv thing. <laughs> Smoothest way to be like, there's no break. Great. <laughs> so science backs this work, which is super exciting because not only do we love performing and teaching this work, but we're nerds at heart. We love science. We have the privilege and honor to be working with this gentleman on the screen, Dr. Charles Lim. He's actually based out of U University of California, San Francisco, where we are. And currently, right now, he's working on a really exciting uh, pioneer study that really explores how expertise and experience with improvisation really helps the brain around creativity and expression. So his work studying the brain and creativity really helps us demonstrate how this work today is going to be effective and really stick. Now, if you've seen maybe his TED Talk, or you could look it up later, uh, in his previous research, he took improvisational musicians and rappers and put them inside an fMRI machine, which scans the brain. And he found that, and he looked, uh, rather, at how when they were improvising solo or collaboratively, which parts of the brain lit up, what activity created in the brain. And what he discovered that when, when they were improvising, this medial prefrontal cortex area, the pink arrow, really lit up. It's the autobiographical, self-expressive, you know, creative part of that brain, that state of flow. You know, hopefully we've all felt something like that in our lives when you're just on fire. You just feel that sense of creativity and flow. That's that part of the brain that lit up. And he saw that actually at the same time, simultaneously, in this lateral prefrontal cortex, the blue arrow, that part of the brain dialed down, really stopped being lit up. It 
quieted. And that's the inner critic part of the brain, right? A lot of times the barrier to the communication, the self-expression, that ways that we can be more free and access those creative parts of who we are. And so this really gives us excitement and um, fuel to do the work that we do and be passionate about it, knowing that it can help us access those creative parts of ourselves. So that's what we're going to be doing today, really looking at skills uh, of how we can kind of drop away and turn down the volume on that inner critic that's going to be there. We're not saying it's going to disappear. But how can we turn that volume down so we can access for each of us in our authentic ways those expressive creative parts of our brain up on our feet? Wonderful. So now we're going to uh, start to focus on this aspect of presence. Presence is all about process and preparation as a communicator and a speaker. So you can stay seated or you can stand up, whatever makes the most sense for you. But we're about to do some exercises to kind of focus on these three aspects of presence, the physical, the vocal, and the mental. Because no matter how much experience you have or how much anxiety you have around public speaking or how, quote unquote, good you think you are at it, we all have this particular instrument. We have our body, we have our voice, or we have our mind. And our philosophy as speechless is if you're a presenter, you're a performer. So the way that you prepare is like a performer. And like Claire and I have mentioned, our background is in professional you know, theater and comedy and improvisation. So a lot of our techniques come from those worlds. So that's what we're about to do. So if you'd like, stand up now. And we're going to do a couple of exercises to warm up our bodies just a little bit. The first one is going to focus on breathing. A lot of times, even for myself, uh, you know, my heart starts to race when I have to talk, even if I'm in a small meeting, maybe even more so in a small group than even in a big group. And everybody's different. Uh, so one thing that you want to connect to is your breath. So first, just kind of make sure you have, if you're standing, a stance that you feel comfortable in, that you're not locking your knees. And I want you to kind of just rock back and forth on your heels and the balls of your feet a couple times until you feel like you're just, you know, standing in a good place, that you don't feel like you're leaning, you're not locked, because you don't want to, like, cut off circulation. You want to just be relaxed. Uh, great. So now I want you to just kind of take your arms and your shoulders, and I want you to bring them up to your ears, and I want you to sigh or, or breathe in, and then drop them and exhale. I'm sure that felt pretty good. Uh, let's do it again. Great. So now this time, we're going to sigh in. And at the same time, we're going to breathe in. We're going to bring in our arms. We're going to bring those up over our head. And then drop them and exhale. Wonderful. There's a lot of different things affecting us each day. Stress, the, how much energy we have. The stakes, whether they're high or low, and, and what we're trying to communicate. And it's really important to remember just to breathe, because the breath is what connects everything. It also powers everything when you're communicating. Let's do the same thing. And this time, when we drop our arms, just exhale whatever you're feeling. You can vocalize if you're tired, if you're like, what are we doing? I feel crazy <laughs> doing this. Whatever that sound is, because we're all going to do it, just make that sound when you drop your arms. So breathe in again. <sighs> okay, that was exactly what I expected. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, it's, it, it's important to kind of release the, release the feelings through breath a lot of times, especially if you're about to get in front of people and communicate. So you're not holding in tension or nervousness because the most authentic you can be is when you're most relaxed. Uh, and the final time, I want you to just let out uh, a sigh and the sound and the vocalization, I want it to reflect how you feel about how awesome it is to have this opportunity to be here with each other today. Whatever that feels like so far or how you feel about the rest of the day, let's have that positive sound come out. So. Ah. <laughs> that was amazing. We were on Wonderful. a roller coaster. That did was that, amazing. Did that feel good? <laughs> yeah. It's really simple. We forget sometimes, though, in the most important times uh, when we're performing to breathe. And that goes for maybe communicating at work and public speaking. And for me, a lot of times it happens when I'm like working out. I'll just forget. It's really important to just kind of connect with that. So that's why we do that, to kind of warm up that particular part of us. It centers us. And then we can move on to the body. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a simple exercise that kind of just loosens us up and gets all that nervous energy out called shake out. What we're going to do is we're going to shake first our right arm, then our left arm, then our right leg, and then our left leg. It's not unlike the hokey pokey, I think. Um, you shake them all about. Um, you're going to shake them on a count of eight each time. 
and then we're gonna say that out loud. We're gonna count to eight with each limb, and then we're gonna do the same thing, count to four, then two, then one, and then I want you to strike a pose that you feel like embodies how you want to feel at the end of the summit today, okay? So this is all about just getting all that nervous energy out, waking up our bodies, so follow me. Here we go, right arm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 one. Yes. Hold it. Give yourself a round Hold it. There you go. There you go. Nice. Wonderful. <laughs> it's super simple what we've just done and what we'll continue to do, but it's so many times forgotten, especially in the workplace and in a, a setting like today. Even though you're presenting, you're still performing. This is a show. There is a literal stage that we're on, and sometimes that's the case. And a lot of you may be thinking, that's not how I present and communicate. I know, and we do too. If you're just in a room with people, you're sitting down, or you're on VidCon or a conference call, that's still a presentation, that means it's still a show, which means you still have to prep like a performer. So what we're giving you today are just simple tools that you can do really quickly, and they just wake you up. Because even if you're not moving a lot, if you're on a conference call, if you're a little bit more awake physically, your voice changes, your facial expressions change, maybe even the language you use changes. So it's really important to warm up. Awesome. So the next piece is vocal. So we're gonna do uh, an exercise called squish splat. I'm gonna hand you back this. Sure. So you can remain standing or seating, whatever works for you, take care of yourself. So for this exercise, we're gonna imagine you have a ball of dough in your hand, so go ahead. That's right, now you all have a ball of dough. <laughs> now, we're going to establish what I love to call the face dough connection. How this works is the ball of dough is your face. So, I know, welcome again to our workshop. Now. We're going to swirl this around, and as I swirl the dough, I get to swirl my face. So you do it. You go ahead and establish your face dough connection, okay? I call it the FDC. Yeah, it's the FDC. Yeah, great. Great. Awesome. Great. All right, so now that we've established that connection, we are going to throw this ball of dough on an imaginary glass in front of yourself. No one will be harmed in this exercise. It's an imaginary piece of and dough. And if you are, it's not our fault. It's not. <laughs> You signed waivers, right? Okay. Uh, great, so we have this glass. We are also going to embody the splat that this dough makes. So I will show you and then you will do it. So let's try it. So I'm gonna take this ball of dough and I'm gonna go splat. Wow. That's right. Um, we're gonna make the face as wide as possible. We're gonna drop the tongue out. And good thing, you're all facing me. So <laughs> we can only see you. So this first one, we're the only ones who can see you. So just know that, all right? So on three, one, two, three, splat! Wow. Amazing, amazing! <laughs> but um, I saw some shy tongues out there. They weren't coming out. Is that Never a said it that phenomenon? way, and I don't know if I will again. I won't say it like that again. But what I mean by that in an inviting, safe way is I would love for you to drop that tongue out, right? This is, the tongue is a muscle that we can either work and prepare or can either get in our way. So I know it might feel a little weird or awkward or you didn't know you'd be sticking your tongue out today, but just drop that tongue out, give yourself that freedom to warm up that muscle that extends all the way down here, right? It's a big, big muscle, right? Let's try it one more time. One, two, three, splat! Great. Disgustingly beautiful, loved it, loved it, great. So now we've got the splat, right? So let's stay in our splat positions, right? We've just splatted that. We're also gonna embody ripping that dough off of the glass. And so we're gonna go squish. Squish. We're gonna squish our whole face as if it was one point at our nose. So let's try it one more time. One, two, three, squish. squish. Lovely, lovely. Now I'm gonna have you do it because my eyes were closed. So. <laughs> One, two, three. Squish. Lovely, very squished. You're all just fantastic, it's lovely, great. So now we're gonna do a splat, squish, splat, squish. <laughs> I'm gonna face a little bit this way. I'm gonna give this side of the room a little love. Okay, I'll come Amy this will way. do that. <laughs> Hello, empty chairs. <laughs> there are people over there. Okay, great. So we're gonna start with the splat, 
and squish, splat, squish. Let's try it. One, two, three, splat, squish, splat, squish. And shake that off. You did it. You did it. That's right. That's right. And now, because I think you're very advanced, I'd love for you to turn to a partner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or, or a group of three. Great. All right. All right, now. I know, I know. But we've been... We've been talking about vulnerability a lot, guys. Okay, so now's our opportunity, right? A big part of performing and presenting is being seen, right? So in this safe environment, let's practice that muscle too, right? So you're going to make direct eye contact with your partner <laughs> as you do the splat, squish, splat, squish. <laughs> On three, one, two, three. <laughs> Amazing. Now that's only internal, only internal. I just like reviewing the day. I like reviewing the day. It's good. Okay, wonderful. Thank your partner. Thank your partner. Wonderful. And, and face back to me. Great. Wonderful. Thanks for trying that very vulnerable thing. I know. Um, but this is some of that, that's some of those, uh, you know, reaching out of our comfort zone that Sammy alluded to before, right? These are these expressive parts of our, our brain that we want to fire up. And some of that inner critic is still there. So I know that's there, but we're over the course of the two hours going to quiet that down. Now, the last thing is a bit of a tongue twister for our vocal preparation. Some of us are not native English speakers. Some of us speak many languages. And so it's really lovely to not only work the enunciation of words, but also the pronunciation of words, right? Before you get out here, maybe even choose that tricky phrase or word or specific phrase that legal has made you say or you have to nail in that presentation, right? We know you, we know you folks. Um, so just know that you have that opportunity to kind of warm up that, those tricky words. So we're going to use an example of uh, two words called toy boat. So you're going to, three words, we're just going to try it three times. We're going to say toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Really? Yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> great. There's some sounds of disgust. Maybe that was, that was hard. Maybe that was some mess ups. Great. It's okay. Good to mess up. Great to try. So let's do it three more times, now really over-enunciating. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Mmm, that T sound, lovely. Uh, now we're going to do it, saying it three times again, just with different emotions, right? You could be sad about the toy boat, you could be happy, <laughs> you could be confused by the toy boat, whatever makes sense. But just try three different emotions, go for it. Toy boat, toy boat. <laughs> Making amazing. eye contact during that was very, <laughs> very French. Just such a range. It was like as if you were on the streets of New York just talking to yourself and then past someone else. It's like, so toy boat, yeah. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> amazing. So that that's our vocal portion of how we like to prepare and how we work with individuals and teams to prepare. So now we're going to move to the mental piece of building presence. Yeah, and before we do, just this really simple point. Again, a lot of these techniques, as I keep saying, are from the world of performance. We always tell people it is better to look and or feel silly backstage yeah. than on stage. These things are silly. Some of these are literally designed for children, yes. uh, there? as you can tell. <laughs> but professional <laughs> actors on stage and film on television, these are the types of things they do so they can speak for a lengthy time and be clear and be, feel confident and feel warmed up. So now let's move to the mental part of it. So this is a very simple exercise about building confidence. A big part about being uh, a great and confident communicator is about feeling confident in being wherever you are and having your presence felt and, and seen and heard, as Claire said. So this exercise was actually brought to us by Claire. So it is called, I am Claire and I am here. 
And that simple sentence is all you have to say in just a second, but first we're gonna demo it. So you're gonna get into groups of uh, you know three or four, doesn't really matter, and one person at a time is gonna do is exactly what Claire is going to do, and then the other people will have another role. So I'll tell you about that in a second. So Claire, go ahead and take the stage. I am Claire, and I am here. Wonderful, so it's very simple. She's not performing in a manner that is beyond what she would already do if she was just speaking that phrase. For a lot of us, it's just enough of a challenge, right, to just speak up. And then after that, share who you are. And after that, say, I deserve to be here. So that's all this little phrase is doing. Now, when you're not speaking that phrase, because each one of you will take turns doing this in small groups, the other people are going to make that person feel like a rock star, a movie star, a celebrity, a politician, whatever you feel like is a huge public figure you'd be excited to meet. You're going to act like the paparazzi, essentially. And you're just going to kind of whisper like, oh my god, Claire's here, Claire's here, everybody look, Claire's here. So because Claire deserves this right now, do that for her. Just whisper that she's here. Oh my god, oh my god, this is amazing. No pictures, get out of here. Oh, thanks, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you. Great. So <laughs> that's all this exercise is. There's a part of it that's about the, the earnestness of, I really need to just speak and no one interrupt me and tell you who I am and why I'm here and that I am here. And then there's the playful side of it of like, it just feels really good to be welcomed and for people to be excited that you're there. Because that's a part of the equation sometimes we, we miss. Uh, so get into little groups of three or four really quickly. And let's have each of you do that. Just you speak your name, everyone whispers, and do that until you've all done it. Go ahead. If you can hear me clap once, if you can hear me clap twice, if you can hear me clap three times. All right, if you can bring your attention back to the stage. Thank your partners, thank your partners. Great. So we're gonna move, we're gonna move on, but just remember this idea of building presence is that if you're a presenter, you're a performer. Presenting can mean anything, really. It doesn't mean just this kind of setting. Uh, you got to prepare, you got to warm up, just like you would if you were going to go for a run, you would stretch. If you're going to communicate with people and you want to be heard and seen and you want to be impactful, you got to prepare. And that goes for your body, your voice, and your mind. Thanks for doing those building presence exercises with us and maybe pushing past some of those comfort areas. Thank you for that. Uh, I loved hearing all the celebrations and paparazzi reactions. That was amazing. The real paparazzi is now here. Thanks. <laughs> No, don't worry about it. What do you got? Okay. <laughs> I'm not an actor. Jeez. All right. So uh, why we do this, right? Again, we are science lovers, but preparation really matters, right? Um, a lot of times we over-prepare the written part, right? We write out a script or the talk or we really work the content, right? But only about 7% of words are what is remembered and communicated in a message, right? And we really overly prepare and depend on that part to do the work for us. But that's why a lot of the work that we do is that physical, mental, vocal, because most of our message really are the vocal elements, right? That tone, that feeling, that vibe, that presence that we get from somebody. That's what we take away. Um, and 55%, that nonverbal part of how you communicate, as we in California call it, your vibe, you know? Um, how do you feel about that person? What does that person make you feel? 
as you come up on stage. A lot of times when we're working and coaching with people, we ask, what do you want the audience to feel? Right? We don't talk about feelings enough in the workplace. We do it a lot, right? Because that's the ultimate question. We want to tap into that sense of activating people's emotions and connecting and making an impact in that way. Wonderful. So we're now going to do another exercise that focuses on the positive aspects of building a new horizon and communicating with confidence. So this exercise is called I Don't Have a Toothache. It actually comes from a Buddhist monk and peace activist, Thich Nhat Hanh, who refers to our state of neutral gratitude, not noticing when our tooth feels good versus how it feels when it hurts, as being a non-toothache. And this exercise came from that idea. So this is about no matter how hard it is to get through something personally or professionally, there's always something that's going well. There's always some positive to reflect on. And in order to be really confident as a communicator, you have to know where those positives are and you have to be able to kind of hold on to them and you have to be able to amplify them. So in this exercise, I want you to get with a partner. So find someone maybe you haven't spoken to yet. So go find a partner really quickly, Different part please. of the room, move away. <laughs> Use come here, come here if you can. Find someone as quickly as you can. All right. Raise your hand if you do not have a partner. Do you have a partner? Okay. It seems like everyone has one, so if you could, just direct your attention back here, and I'm going to give you the directions. <laughs> Thank you. If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you for the assist. Uh, so this is the way this works. You're now in pairs. Uh, one of you is going to, you're both going to do both roles, but one of you is first going to ask the other person a prompt. The prompts are on the, uh, the screen there. The screen is not a thing. Um, what isn't wrong today? So <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, I'm not sneezing. That's what's wrong, not Thanks. wrong with me. Um, bless you. Thank you. So what isn't wrong today? What is right today? What is going well? What is working? You can use one or a couple of those. It doesn't really matter. But one of you is going to ask the other person one of those prompts. And the other person, for a minute and a half, minute and a half, as you can see the, the timer up there, is just going to answer that question. Because sometimes we forget all the things that are going great, even amidst some of the most stressful times of our career and our lives. And it's really important to remember those things that are positive. So let's have you go ahead and do that. One of you is going to answer while the other one gives prompts. And then when we run out of time, we'll put a minute and a half back on the clock, and we'll do it again, and you'll reverse roles. Make sense? All right. Okay. Go right ahead. Do I go backward in order to get the clock back on? Yes. I don't know. Can you? Yeah, you can. She said a sign that we're at 2.30, so I was like, hmm. We're at 2.30. Yeah. We needed, we needed to be you know, so hard to look at. Oh, it's 40. Yeah, I can see it, 41. Yeah, I'm trying to look at the actual time. It's 2.29. We're 45 minutes in. Okay. Great. We needed to be around here at about 40, so I think we're right on time. Okay. Five seconds. All right, if you can hear me clap once, if you can hear me clap twice, if you can hear me clap three times. All right, perfect. So now we're going to swap roles. So let me just put a minute and a half back on the clock here. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. So go ahead. And now if you were answering, now you ask the prompts and vice versa. Go right ahead.
I'll just say that little last part and then we'll be done. All right, that's time. So if you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. If you can hear me, clap three times. Thank your partner really quickly. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> so, great. This idea of remembering what's positive and, and doing whatever you can to internally build your own confidence is really important because there's going to be things that are difficult and there's going to be bumps in the road on your way to a new horizon and you need to find ways to uh, just remember and empower yourself to, to know that there's, there's positivity there. Now, I think that one thing that I can say is going well for us is that we accidentally color coordinated with the Women Tech Makers logo. <laughs> and that's going pretty great. Pretty yeah. proud of that. Let's, let's see, can we make it? Blue. If we just put our arms out, are we, are we now the logo? <laughs> Doing it. That oh, was man. not staged. Do you oh. want another one? One more? One more? Okay, great. Oh, man. <laughs> Just an hour of... Oh, that. man. Just oh, an man. hour of workshop and an hour of whatever the fuck. Um, Just photo opportunities. No, we did, not, we did not plan no, that, but I feel pretty good fun. about that. All right, let's move on. Thank you. Thank you. We're living our best lives. We okay. are. These are the only clothes I own. Yeah. <laughs> he packs light. Okay. So... The next thing we're going to do still taps into that idea of positivity, of how we can confidently create and take creative risks when we support each other through this foundational element of improv called yes and, right? The yes and is how do we agree and build on each other's ideas in a way that is generous, right? Supports, really makes my partner look good and know that I've got them, right? Much like our, our host was talking about and, and the lovely speaker earlier, right? We can't succeed in, in, in isolation, right, siloed off. We really get ahead by working together and supporting one another. So this is an opportunity for us to explore and to work that muscle. So you're going to get into new partners in a moment. We'll have you do that in just a second, but maybe find somebody new that you haven't worked with yet. And this will be our prompt together. So one person will say, in five years, I will. And you'll look forward into your journey. Maybe there is a, a new horizon that you've already got on your mind. Maybe there's a goal that you're trying to reach in five years. You can be as realistic or as fantastical about that five-year goal as you would like. Now, you will say that, so partner A will say that, and partner B will really listen, really listen and respond to that person's sentence by saying yes and, and you will build on that dream that goal for that person. Now, we'll do this as the counter says in the corner. One person will start, you'll go back and forth for about a minute and a half, and then we'll reset that timer, and the person who didn't start the last time will go first, and you will say, in five years, I will, right? And that person will be there to support you in that creative risks, risk taking. Toy boat. Toy boat. <laughs> Toy boat. Toy boat. Uh, risk taking. Risk taking. Lovely. So go ahead and start your journeys. Find a new partner and begin.
hospital. Mine's got a hair on it. Okay, go ahead and switch. Go ahead and switch. 1.30 on the clock. Go ahead and switch. If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. If you can hear me, clap three times. Amazing, amazing. Uh, please thank your partner. Thank your partner. And and stay, stay in your current partner. Stay with your current partner. You can you can sit down if you'd like, but just stay with your current partner. Great. Or stand. You do you. Lovely. So now that you've gone on those, those journeys, you have your, now you have your five-year plan, so you're welcome. <laughs> you've got them set, right? You're ready. And now, so we've come, oh boy, <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about it. We've come a little bit into our journey today, in this two hours time that we're sharing with our, 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 each other today. So we've worked a little bit on building presence, right? Dropping into that sense of playfulness, positivity, how we can really communicate confidently with these preparation elements, tap into our unique voice through group support and really yes-anding someone else's voice and perspective, and then also taking some of these creative risks as you already are and have been so far. So I would love in your pairs, just right now, these are just three prompts for you to use to start conversation between the two of you, right? Maybe one you're like, oh, I could talk about that one for the all, all three minutes. Or maybe you're like, oh, let's, let's touch on each. But in your pairs, you get to decide kind of how these questions influence how you debrief just now. So we're going to do this for about three minutes. So just take a moment to now reflect on where we've gone so far. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's where that came from. <laughs> 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 
3.30 for a 3.40 start of everything else. We'll stop at 3.30. Oh shoot, split the difference will be okay. It might be ahead of 3.35 or so. Okay. So 56, uh, 50, 55. Five. Okay, great. I'll have you stop and then you can just uh, yeah. You want them to talk, share out? Oh, yeah. That's why I made the news. <laughs> Amazing. Stay where you are for now. Stay where you are for now. Uh, you can sit if you'd like, but you can sit if you like. What am I talking about? Go ahead. You deserved it. Sit down if you'd like. Lovely. So you had some opportunities in your pairs to kind of reflect on where we've been. Hopefully these prompts uh, resonating with you. So we have uh, a couple of volunteers with some, some mics. So if they're if there's any insight that maybe you or your partner shared that you really loved what they shared and had a really cool insight, let's just take a moment to just share with the group. And uh, I'd invite you, if you're maybe a person who uh, wouldn't speak up or speak in the entire group, we're going to yes and you. We're going to really yes and your voice. We got you, right? So maybe push past into that little discomfort. Raise your hand. I got one up here. Oh, okay. And just go ahead. <laughs> It's already happening. Let's yes and or say yes and. Yes and. Yeah. So go ahead and say your name so we can. Hi, yeah. I'm Asia. Hey. Um, sorry, mics are awkward for me. Um, so I was talking to Ray, and we were talking about how dance is a kind of improvisational thinking, and that when you're dancing, you look at what's happening in the mirror and Im imp improvise from there. Um, and I thought that was really cool to connect that because she uses music and dance to amplify her voice. Oh, nice. So I thought that was really cool. Very cool. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Cool. We had some other hands. Some Hi, hands. my name is Cindy. Oh, and um, so one of the things I feel like, I'm, most of the time whenever I have to go to public speaking, I'm kind of 75% excited and 25% of being nervous about being nervous, if that makes any sense. And I feel like um, this is kind of give us like a before ritual kind of you can get used to and make that like instead of being nervous you can do these things and focus on that instead so yeah wonderful thanks, thanks for sharing we have one back there back there <laughs> and i've seen some other hands we'll get to you i i, I see you hello yeah uh i'm liz hey, and liz. my partner was rosaria hey uh and we were sort of talking about how well at least on my on my side it was it was really nice to have someone who was very positive back. Um, but uh, And then sort of it was asked of like, what if someone is, like if you're doing some sort of public speaking and there are, are sort of non-positive people around and like how do you sort of build that network? And she was saying that she would invite people to some of her speaking events that would sort of like ask the questions or sort of like lead so this like sort of momentum was built, which I thought was really like insightful. That's awesome. That's yeah. a great idea. That's a great. Yeah, we got one right here. And that's a great, great hit. Thank you for that insight and, and skill that you're already building. Yeah, go ahead. 
Hi, I'm Mary Kate. My partner was Angela. Um, so in terms of uh, building confidence, we really like the squish splat <laughs> activity. Um, we were talking about how it really, for actors, it makes you put yourself out there. And we don't always necessarily do that within tech, especially if we're going over a product review or explaining results of something. So making yourself feel silly beforehand and then being on stage when you're speaking to your colleagues, that really helps you feel that you're in the right place. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Maybe one more? We got one more over there. And maybe this, you'll be the last one. We'll do one more. I can't say no to her. Two one mores. There you go. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Tessa, and I was talking with my partner, Mina, about how I forgot how an exercise like shakeout can help you get rid of a lot of stiffness, mm -hmm. uh, but that I would feel kind of silly doing it at my desk at work. And so we talked about like ways to feel less silly, like maybe listen to music or something. But I hope that someday I could get to the point again where I could just do it at my desk and not care. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. And un uh, until you get to that point, find a place where you do feel comfortable. Claire and I have been warming up all day since we got here. And we did it just in a little hallway where no one could find us. I hope. <laughs> I hope you could not find us. We were doing some weird stuff. But yes, that is, that is the penultimate of being confident, doing it wherever you feel like you want to do it. But know that a lot of these exercises, uh, to take those baby steps, find a place where you feel safe. Right now we're in a workshop environment. But find a place that you feel safe and like you can do it. Awesome. And there was one more here, this lovely individual, right here in the red. Well, my name is Lupe. I am came from Bolivia, so far away. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and well, I was well. I, I have many partners, but I really love <laughs> all the exercises. And I think that we well, I am I came from a background that's technical. I am a good developer, so I think it it can help me to give talks, technical talks, but in a better way, like that people that listen to you. It's not getting bored. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you Lupe. Thank you. Wonderful. All right. Lovely. And there'll be other opportunities to, to reflect out to the group and to continue this conversation beyond this room. So there will be other opportunities. Perfect. So let's jump back in. So now we're going to turn our attention to a huge part of communicating, obviously, storytelling, and more specifically about telling your story, amplifying your own unique voice. So what you're looking at on the screen is the uh, traditional Western culture story arc. It's what w most of our stories that we read and watch in television, uh, theater, and, and film look like. So that's kind of the shape of it. Don't expect you to memorize that or use that, but just wanted to give you that point of reference. We have other curriculum built around how to use it in a more practical way. But right now, that's just kind of like what a story looks like. But in terms of why we tell stories, we naturally tell stories in this way already. It's very satisfying to ourselves and to our brains to hear a story told in this way. And when we tell stories with a clear beginning, middle, and an end, it helps the audience know how to listen. So using stories is really impactful, even if what you're talking about is maybe very technical, data-driven, and you don't think it's t a quote unquote a story, it always helps to add that story, whether it's throughout as a narrative structure or adding a little bit of you at the top. So when we talk about horizons, we often look back to, to move forward. And sharing our experiences of growth, learning, and triumph is really, really beneficial to meeting those new horizons. So our stories can act as connective tissue. They can act as what I call social currency. They have value. And every time you share them, I think that value increases. So just know that you're already filled with amazing, incredible stories. So a stat that really backs up how important they are is from Jennifer Aker. She's a professor of marketing at Stanford Graduate School of Business. <laughs> uh, Claire's alma mater. Uh, stories are up to 22% more memorable than facts. So facts are important, but we retain stories better. It's just easier to walk away from an incredible day like today where so many empowering and confident speakers get in front of you and tell their stories. But if it's actually a story and not just data, it's easier for you to walk away and just remember what that was and then keep that sharing going. Uh, so researchers in Spain actually found when people hear neutral words like chair or key, the language processing parts of our brain are activated exclusively. But Jennifer Aker said when you use data and stories together, 
they resonate with the audience both intellectually and emotionally. So for a lasting effect, you need to persuade the rational brain, but also resonate with the emotional brain. So the emotional brain is activated when you tell stories, and it makes it easier for us to remember your message. So we're going to practice just that uh, through an exercise we call port key. Uh, any Harry Potter fans in the house? OK, wait, I heard a yeah over here. Who is that? Who is that? OK, great. Uh, may I ask you for the definition of the port key in the, the Harry Potter universe? Do you recall what it, that is? Uh, it's totally OK if you don't. An enchanted item that you can touch and it'll transport you to another location. She nailed it. She nailed well, give it. Give her a round of applause. Come on. Yes. Harry Potter. Harry historian. Potter. And I know everybody else who didn't get to answer, you knew it too. I know you did. I know you did. I know. But yes, for those who, who didn't hear, maybe in the back, uh, it is an object in the Harry Potter universe that when you touch it, it transports you to somewhere else, right? Like Jennifer Aker talks about and like we teach all over the world, story is transportative, right? It can transport us as presenters and it can transport an audience to engage, to empathize, to see themselves in our stories and emulate those stories, right? So we're going to practice that by tapping into our own personal stories here. So we're going to get into groups of four, four people, and each of you are going to have about one to two minutes to tell a short personal story. Now some of you right now might be like, no, I don't want to do that. That's not, that's not, maybe not in my comfort zone. Maybe that's not something I'm ready to do. Know that we can take creative risks in this room. People will listen and be actively embrace that silence and give you that full one to two minute space just to tell your story without interruptions. I'm definitely an interactive listener. Sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, that totally happened to me. Wait, where? Oh wait, go back to that. I know, some of us are that, right? But in this moment, for this exercise, really give that person just the space and time to listen. Just give them your come here, come here face. Just listen and love what they're doing, right? Now, it just has to be personal story. That's it. Doesn't have to be funny, clever, interesting. That, that story you always tell at events that just kills, right? Whatever, right? <laughs> Let that expectation go, right? We're being generous and spontaneous and using improv thinking to really be in the moment with each other. So we will give you a word that will serve as your port key. It will transport you to a memory of your own, right? So if I were to say lens, right? Lens takes me to and our amazing brains are already problem solving and associating and thinking through our catalog of amazing, fascinating stories and memories. And I will just pick the first one that comes to mind. Let that first idea be right. It's okay to share that one and see what happens, right? You'll discover it in the moment, maybe what that story is as you tell it. So just know you can go with that right, first right answer. Now at the end of that one to two minutes, that first person who told that story will then pluck a new port key from their story that's some word or concept. So maybe I would tell um, a story about uh, a film that I worked on and that, and then talk about And maybe stage was a word that came up in mine. So I would offer the stage port key to another person in my group, and they would say, stage takes me to. And that is their new port key. Cool? So we're going to drop in. One to two minutes is maybe shorter than we realize, right? There will be a timer up for eight minutes. So just keep an eye on the clock a little bit. If you're over that two minutes, find an ending just by saying, and that's the end of my story. That's a perfectly fine ending. That's totally fine. <laughs> it's very clear, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Good. It's totally fine to just say that, pluck a port key, pass it on to the other person so we can have that sense of equilibrium and balance and have everybody be able to share their story. So go ahead, get into groups of four, and then take a look up at the timer, and I will begin it in just a moment. <laughs> and once you get in your groups, I'll give you a port key. No, I haven't. You're right. If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. Wonderful. I haven't given you a port key yet because I'm a flawed human being. So your port key is going to be hmm. panel. Panel is your port key. Panel, whatever that means to you. Doesn't have to be a story about panels. It can transport you to any story. Give me a group of two. That's okay. That's all right. Okay. 
Note to self, give the port key before they get into groups. Note to self. Note to self. Yeah, we're doing great because we have elevator pitch, press conference, and then the big finish. I would love to do one more reflect out to the group. Yeah, we have time for that. Okay, great. So we have like 35 to 40 minutes to do everything, including the seven minutes of this. Great. <laughs> okay. okay. Concise, energy, concise, energy. Excuse me? Did, um, did the bookmarks get brought in? Do you know anything about where those are? So they will be handed out um, when we hand out tech kits to everybody. So I'm just, I think we just say... I've seen some of those on the chairs, so maybe that's already happened. So I'd say, yeah, maybe say, if we haven't already received one, they'll be handing out bookmarks. Glad you're here still. <laughs> sure. I'm just gonna put this here. I don't want to keep passing that person.
was like doing a four. I was like, this isn't how a duel works. <laughs> I'm gonna suck at a duel if I ever be able. Summer Stock Company, the Embrax Group, we did like a little, like a flyer run on the beach, because that's where we live, where we thought it'd be interesting to dress as cowboys on opposite ends of this beach and just like walk like this through the beach, and people started following because they're like, what's going to happen? And then when we got next to each other, we drew flyers, and we were like, show's happening now. Kind of <laughs> it was great. It oh, took okay. an hour to get together. <laughs> I think some people were like, that's all. I thought you were going to fight. No, we're passive cowboys. Lovers, not haters. Lovers. If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. Amazing, thank your group. Thank your group for those stories. Amazing, thank you. And you might have some burning questions that you didn't get asked of that amazing story you just heard, but the day is not over. You will have that opportunity later. Now we're gonna move on. Sammy, take us there. All right, here we go. Uh, so now we're gonna talk about taking uh, taking these stories and building on them and figuring out the best way, what's the context, what's the time frame, if you will. Clapping already. Thank you. Oh, great. Great. All right. Oh, thank you for clapping. No thank pressure. You. Here we go. She yes ended by clapping. I love it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, I've never felt so supportive. <laughs> So elevator pitch, I, th I think it's pretty self-explanatory what that is, but for those of you that may be wondering what that is, it really is the shortest and most shareable version of whatever message you're trying to communicate. It could be you're pitching yourself in an interview. You could be pitching yourself for a raise or promotion. You could be pitching a product, or in my case, as a co-founder, sometimes your company's idea to, a, to an investor. So it's just a really bite-sized version, the p most powerful and most poignant shortest version of what you really want to get across to people. And it can be done in a variety of ways, but what we're working on right now is just time boxing, getting used to having those different time frames where you might actually only have a few seconds to talk to somebody as the elevator doors close or open. Or if you're in a gathering like this, and it's not that you don't want to talk for a very long time, but you just want to meet all the incredible people in the room, as many as you can, so it behooves you to be able to be short and sweet and get in and get out and meet as many people as you want to. Uh, so, what are some situations that you think you've had in the past where an elevator pitch might make the most sense, or, or many, maybe there's some that are coming up? Um, going to a conference with thousands of people and wanting to talk to like 300 of them, mm -hmm. um, and having to talk to catch your ear is just the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, attending a, a thousands conference and wanting to reach at least 30%. Of yeah. those people. We'll, we'll yeah. take a couple more, and then we're going to get up and do it. Thank you for coming around with the microphones. Right. Um, my name is Yanni. I think um, usually when I have to give an elevator pitch is when I have an agenda, that if either in a board meeting or I have to release a product, um, I have to first influence them about what I do and what I am about before I pitch the product or talk to the, you know, the consumer of my product. Great. Wonderful. And Great. one more, one more. Mm -hmm. Right here. <laughs> Two hands raised. So um, much like so many people that I've met here today, I am a freelance UX UI designer. 
this is the start of my elevator pitch, by the way. Um, <laughs> but there are so there are so many of us, uh, and you know, there's only so much business. So really, more than designing, I find that I'm actually more of a salesperson. Mm. The product that I'm selling is myself. So, um, so our elevator pitches come in handy when I have to say why you should hire me, yeah, instead of this other woman who is completely lovely as well. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. So now we're going to jump into this exercise. Uh, I'm going to tell you the framework of it, and then we're going to demo it, and then you're going to do it. And so basically, you're going to decide in little small groups of, of three, I think, what you need to pitch. It can be you. It can be your company, an organization that you believe in, whatever. For the sake of this in the workshop setting, doesn't really matter. Take this time to uh, practice an elevator pitch that you're trying to figure out. Uh, and the way it's going to work is the first person is going to do a one-minute elevator pitch. So it behooves you to have a timekeeper in your group. Just take your phone or your watch and just keep time. So the first person is going to pitch something for a minute. And when the minute's up, that's, you know, just like with, and that's my story. And that's my pitch, I suppose you could say. Um, and then the idea is to cut it in half as it moves forward. It's not that you're trying to talk faster and get the same amount of content in. It's not that you're going to do the first half and go see me later for second half. <laughs> it's, like, it's not to be continued. Uh, and you're not also not going to do the second half. You're really trying to take the essence of what the person just said and condense it into less time. And then from there, we do that, as you can see, in 15 seconds. And then in five seconds, I would say that's really that one sentence value proposition. You got. Five seconds is the you know amount of time you, it takes to maybe say one sentence, maybe a little bit more if you if it's a short sentence, uh, and then after that everybody in their group is going to count out loud one two three like we did for I'm out of here and come here come here, and you're going to just say the word that comes to mind after everyone's gone around 60 30 15 five, and that word is not supposed to match. You're not supposed to try to all come up with the same word. It's really about for the person who started and even everyone else listening, to realize how people are perceiving that pitch, what's standing out, what's sticky, what's memorable, what's resonating. And it doesn't matter what those words are. It's just probably going to be interesting to you as the person who started to hear what they are. And then each person will start. So if you're in a group of three, each person will kick off a one-minute pitch. So does that make sense so far? Yes. You have a question. Um, so if I do the one-minute pitch, then the next person in my group does a 30-second pitch of the stuff I just Yes. yes. Okay. yes. So we're going to essentially do yes. three rounds of pitches in your group, and you're going to do the same pitch, thir 60, 30, 15, 5, and then one word, and then move on to a new pitch. And okay. we'll just demo it right now. Sure. So 60 seconds on the clock. Okay. I will do 60 seconds. Claire will do 30, and then maybe we'll come to the, uh, the crowd. If you want to do 15, 5, and one word, we'll all two, to get two together. Uh, so 60 seconds on the clock. I guess I'll talk about our company, even though you've heard a lot about it, I guess, already. But the elevator pitch for Speechless is it is a much more enjoyable, much more social, much more modern version of a public speaking training uh, program that makes the thing that is the scariest thing in the world to most people on Earth a lot more digestible, a lot easier to practice, a lot easier to get better at and way more fun for everyone involved, not only for the participant, but their audiences, no matter if they're in a small group setting or on a stage for thousands of people. That was 27 seconds. 27 seconds. <laughs> so if I had another 33 seconds, I would continue to talk. Um, so that's, that's a great example of like, what is, that, what is that mental clock? It's OK if you don't go all the way to a minute, yeah. just like I did. You can go, all right, well, that was 30 seconds. Right. Let's just go 15, 15. five, one. Yeah. Or if you feel, because we're trying to demo for you so you can get going, uh, if you feel like you want to give that person 60 seconds, just keep going. It's totally fine. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Cool. Groups of three, let's go. <laughs> no, no. I want you to have as much time as possible. Let's get to you. Technically, I think so. Yeah. I think feels like we have 
should have technically 30 minutes left, but I don't know if we're ending at 3.40 or 3.30. Yeah, I think we should shoot for 3.30 yes. to 3.35. Great. Okay. Okay. And I'm, for time, I'm going to have them stay in their same group of three for this next exercise. Just so we can have more time for that reflection, because they seem to be a group that likes to do that, which is great. Mm -hmm. For one minute? Yeah. Now you do the 30 minute version of hers as if it were your own. Yeah. Yeah. you can hear me clap once, if you can hear me clap twice, if you can hear me clap three times, wonderful, thank your partners, wonderful. You may, you may not have gotten all the way around, but just for the sake of time, we're going to keep going. Oh, do you want to keep going in, in lieu of other exercises? One more? One, One more? more? All right. 
One more minute. One, one more. Minute. One more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's perfect. And then that sets us up to shorten the next one. Cool. <laughs> oh. Yeah, go, go figure that out, I guess. We're going till 340, correct? Because we started at 140? But you're just the person giving me time, so I'm just checking in with you. So 340 is when we end? I think it's the same as 340. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I don't... That's okay. Yeah, just the workshop is two hours, so... Yeah. Okay, yeah. Go for it. 3.40? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And if you need to, if you need to check in with Kristen about it, okay. but sure yeah, it should be there too. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. It's okay. Uh, yeah. And I was like, I don't know, I don't know. And I'm like, okay, well, the workshop is two hours, and we started at 1.40. So it's like, cool to go till 2.40, and she's like... Yeah, yeah, well, yes, it's 2.40, so I was like, okay. All right, if you can hear me clap once, if you can hear me clap twice, if you can hear me clap three times. I hope that extra minute helped you, did it? Yeah. Yes, all right, very good. Thank you, partners. Give yourselves a round Thank of applause. Thank you, partners. Thank you, partners. So... <laughs> As we turn the corner on this exercise with elevator pitching and just communicating any kind of important message, uh, it's really important to uh, yeah, just have a frame of reference for how long you have to speak and how much uh, you have to say in that amount of time. And, and it's always great to hear other people's perspectives to kind of share your own pitch back to you and boil it down to that essence. And the way that we use that sometimes is to not only build elevator pitches for different uh, speakers, but also build out talks yeah. that are much longer. So the time boxing can go the opposite direction. We actually sometimes work with keynote speakers. We actually work with some of the speakers at some of the summits this year mm -hmm. for these events, yeah. where we kind of use the pitches to build <laughs> out five minute uh, lightning talks all the way to maybe someone who's doing a keynote that's 20, 30 minutes long, uh, something like that. So it's a very effective exercise to build talks out. Wonderful. We are going to move on to our last big exercise for our time together. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Sammy. Um, due to your, your urgent groan a moment ago, like, mm, one more minute. Great. Totally fine. We, we want to support you and how you're experiencing this two hours together. So I know uh, we're going we're gonna to just shorten the time for this next exercise just a little bit. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, this exercise is called press conference, and it comes directly from feedback we got from last year's participants, who really wanted to have a, an opportunity to practice and skill build one of the most spontaneous and adaptive and flexible parts of a lot of their jobs last year, which is Q&As, panels, press conferences, whether it's internal, right, um, at meetings or um, or even external at different major events where maybe you're a spokesperson or someone representing a brand, a company, a department, uh, or yourself as a, as a freelancer, right? Um, so this is going to be our opportunity to bring all of the elements that we've done so far today, tapping into that improv thinking, and we're going to put it all together in a Q&A style setup. So we're going to get back into those same groups of three that you were just in. So we'll get back to those same groups. And I know there's a, a four in the corner, but let's just bring that down to three, just so we can make sure that everybody gets it. So at, at a minute, I will reset it to four. So you will each have three minutes to do this. Now, we have different roles within these the groups of three. One will be a speaker. So each person will get a chance to be the speaker. You will choose a topic in which you're an expert in. You are an expert in something. Yes, you are. So choose that topic. It can be work, life, passion, hobby, whatever you'd like. Let that first idea be the right one. And you will start by saying the last sentence of your amazing talk. You will land that last sentence. Finish that sentence. Applause from the press, of course. The two other people are the members of the press, because press clap, I hope. I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
Then the press will raise their hand. Members of the press will raise their hand, state their name, and ask a question of the speaker, as if simulating this Q&A or press time at the end of that person's talk. Speaker, it's your opportunity to stay poised, welcome, inviting, right? Come here, come here, those questions. Breathe, you know, drop into that presence that we've been building today, and really invite that person's question in and answer it to the best of your ability. You are totally, absolutely welcome to say, I don't know the answer, or I'll get back to you, or legally, I can't disclose that. Because <laughs> I'm a boss, and you don't get to know, OK? So <laughs> that wasn't very generous, but you know what I meant. So it's your opportunity to take that agency, answer that question in a way that sets you up to succeed and in a, in a generous way. Now, we'll get into those, back into those groups of three. Each person will have an opportunity for three minutes to be that speaker, to say that last part of their, uh, their talk, to answer some questions. If, it, if you feel like, much like the last exercise, if you're kind of done before three minutes, feel free to move on to another person to be the speaker, and then two people will be the press members, third person will get to be the speaker, two people will be the press members, right? And also, just like we've done throughout this entire time together, if you're answering, you know, if you're a press member and you're asking the questions, yes, maybe hardball a little if you'd like to challenge, um, but let's again yes and and support each other, right? <laughs> let's ask questions that um, challenge in an exciting way or maybe tap into uh, that person's expertise in a way that maybe will make them look good and be a fun challenge for them. So let's set them up to succeed and really yes and in ways that these questions support. Great, so get back into that group of three. You have three minutes, first speaker, go for it. So I think if we go to 340, we'll be fine now. So we'll do 333, so nine minutes. Yeah, all right. I think. Well, we know that's all we're no matter what. So I think we need to just time box some of the other things. Like that needs to probably go fast. If you want people to sit down and write, we might, we might have to just change a couple things. We could just skip this today's focus. Have them write and then speak out with the writing portion after. Should we do that? Do we, we have to push we the timer now? 11 minutes after we do the today's focus. Or 11, 11 minutes of content, not necessarily time. But we'll have around. Yeah, the long story of it is we have less time left after this is over than we budgeted for. So we just need to, as we practice, kind of shave. So it's all in how you frame it. It's like. Let's talk about this. Give me, give me three takeaways out loud, or, or just yeah. think on these, and then we're, we're going to allow you to write in a second. Great. But if we want the, the major emphasis to be sit down and reflect, right. we might want to just burn through everything else. Okay. Okay. Because I think I'm supposed to do this one. Mm-hmm. Slap around. Yeah. Where do you point this that it works for you but not for me? <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> okay. Just yeah, in a minute it's... we'll go back, yeah. Learning moment. If we if we needed more time, we could have decided they'd get into pairs. One person be speaker, one person be press, and they just switch. You each have a couple minutes, and then it's four minutes. So, no for next time. Okay. Yeah. I think instead of you know five minutes of writing, maybe three or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And I, 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 yeah, I like your idea of like think on this for a moment. And, prompt it for later or just get a couple things. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> 
Now it's gone. Looked at that thing at the wrong time. <laughs> the flash? Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of looking at the time a little bit more. You want me to drive the rest of the way, or do you want to click quicker? Yeah, you drive. Okay, I just want to make sure we feel like we Great, are in sync on that. Let's do it. Go for it. Okay, last round of three minutes. Should be on the last person. Last person.
If you can hear my voice, clap once. If you can hear my voice, clap twice. If you can hear my voice, you're already hearing my voice. Lovely, wonderful. Go ahead and thank your partners. Thank your group. Awesome. Wonderful. Lovely. Go for it. All right, everyone, thank you for being so attentive and participating so much and being su such an authentic version of yourself today. Awesome. Big finish. We're just going to tell you kind of some final thoughts here. Uh, so those were the last three exercises we did, port key, elevator pitch, and press conference. Those are some, uh, some things to think about after today. They're going to be in uh, a takeaway PDF that we give you. But we're going to move into uh, reflecting on the entire day now, so reflecting on today and all the exercises that we've done. Lovely. So, as is the theme of this event, right, building a new horizon, we have to have, we've talked a lot about how we look back to move forward, right? We look back on all the things that already are going well, things that we're succeeding at, the way we're connecting with each other, and all of this supports how we want to move forward. So, our focus is today, right, we're to build confidence, amplify your unique voice, and take creative risks, and find the safe space in this room to do that in a collaborative, interactive way. And the way that we did that, we're through a lot of interactive experiential learning exercises. There's a list of them. Again, you don't have to remember them all. I'm sure you're kind of like, whoa, what was that one called? And <laughs> that one was my favorite one, and I don't remember what it is. Or that one was challenging for me, and I don't remember what that one was. You're going to get all of this after today, but just wanted to give you another reminder there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And she is with me. That's great. <laughs> so moving into the future, right, we want to have actionable steps moving forward, right? We've spent this time together, and we've talked about how these are tools and techniques. We want you to be able to implement right away with each other in life, in work, as you reach that next horizon, as you build that next horizon, because we know how hard you work and how much you want to get there together. So we'd love right now for uh, you to pull out that notebook you got in your kit. I believe there's a pen in there, too. Ah, so go ahead back to your original seats, as you are already. <laughs> I was like, they yeah, just want to sit somewhere else, I guess. Belongings. <laughs> Return to your belongings. Thank you for that context. Great. Return to your belongings. And yeah, go ahead and pull out that notebook, that pen. And it's metaphorical you're not in your original seat. Oh. You are now someone else. You are someone you else. Have, you have You've grown. You've transformed. You've grown. So we're going to take a few minutes right now just to use these prompts again to jot down in a different modality, right? Writing down some thoughts, whether that's doodles, images, bullet points, phrases, concepts, whatever works for you and how you like to digest and kind of uh, put information together. And let's look a little bit in those notebooks around what you will keep practicing and building on from today and how you want to use and incorporate these tools and best practices in your life and work moving forward. So again, these are just prompts. Whatever resonates with you, there's no right or wrong way to do this exercise. Take a few moments, just jot down what's sticking, what's feeling useful and relevant, and something you want to take forward into the future. And as you write, I'll just tell you a little bit more about how to move forward and build off of what we've been doing. And again, keep writing and listening if you can. We're going to send you all of this, so I don't expect you to do two things at once. Uh, but basically, try your best to continue doing what you did during these exercises. You're already connecting really authentically and playfully with each other. Continue to do that today. Continue to do that after today. I'm sure that you're making lifelong relationships, friendships, and uh, maybe partnerships with people today, which is amazing. 
Uh, and you can <laughs> practice the things that you did today with us uh, however you would like. But you're going to get that resource in the form of a PDF after the summits are over. Uh, and you'll have all the exercises that we did and, and instructions on how to do them, how to share them with other people, maybe not just the people in this room, but people that you work with back home. So you can do those with others as well. And then also, if you're really interested in, in more about how we train and, and work with people individually in teams and groups, uh, and you want more of this type of uh, coaching and training, we have a Creative Live uh, online speechless training uh, packet for you. So Creative Live is an online training platform that we actually did a series of uh, six classes for earlier this year. It's about eight hours of content. And so you'll be able to access that for free. And we'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. Wow. But that'll be a part of this as well. Yes. It's on a bookmark. The bookmark either is given to you already or will be passed out later. But that's where you're going to find that access code. But I'm also going to put that slide up right now. So it's at creativelive.com slash IWD18. You have access to all six of our classes for three months, uh, all the way to May 3rd. And you not only get the six classes from Speechless, but you get seven other bonus classes from the Creative Live for Business catalog that focus on empowering you to develop your professional skills. So it's a really, really awesome and generous offer from uh, Creative Live made possible by Women Tech Makers. So give everyone a round of applause that made that happen. And then finally, there's uh, some ways to keep in touch. Yeah.